Hello, this is Professor BRB, and today we're going to have a little fun creating this sprinkles pattern uh, that you see here on this cupcake. And uh, let's first just look in our swatches panel and go to a large list view, and you will see that patterns appear in Illustrator in your swatches panel, and they can be applied uh, to any shape you might care to draw, just like a regular swatch. So for example, if I apply this gradient, that applies that, and I can apply the sprinkles. And I've got two different sprinkles patterns here. Uh, you can really create quite a variety. So let's get started. First we're going to go to a different file, a new file, where I have just the blank cupcake, so we can try this out. And the first thing that we need to do is create the elements for our pattern. So I'm going to go to my object tools here and tear those off. And first we're going to make a few little stars. I'll do it down in the corner here. So while I'm drawing this star with my mouse button still down, I'm going to push my up arrow key. And that every time I do that, it's going to add a point to my star. And every time I push the down arrow key, it'll take one away. I just want this many points, six points, so I'm going to make that a little star there. And I do not want a black outline on it. So I'm going to zoom in on this and see what I've got. That looks great. Now as I look through my swatches panel here, I don't really see all of the colors that I want to work with. So um, let's go back to our small thumbnail view. I want kind of a light lavender swatch, and I don't have one here. So I'm going to select my purple swatch here and say New Swatch. And that brings up the settings for the purple swatch. If I hold down my Shift key and then drag, I can get a nice lighter purple there. Holding down the Shift key constrains it and causes these sliders to drag together. And that looks pretty good. Click OK there. Uh, I've got a light pink. Uh, maybe I'll make a lighter blue as well. New swatch, Shift key, and drag. Get that pastel. You can also look for uh, new colors if you want. Um, down here in the swatches panel, there are a lot of built-in color libraries that you can work with. and I'll pull a couple of these in here just in case I might want to use them that are already made up for you. So that's good. So now uh, I'm going to select this and I want to make a copy. So I'm going to hold down my option, uh, or I think it's control key on the PC, and I'm going to make one copy and then another copy. So making sure my fill box is on top here, let's uh, make this one, uh, say, a light pink. Oops, got an extra one there. And this one, a light blue. Okay, those look pretty good. Uh, let's refer back to our original. Um, oh, I think I should have done a yellow one there. So uh, we're going to make some little squares and some little triangles. Let's try that here. Uh, I'll make this one yellow. So in order to make our squares uh, and our triangles, that's very easily done with the option tool, I mean the object tools. Just select the rectangle tool here, and make my little square, holding down my shift key to constrain it to um, constrain it to a perfect square. And now I'm going to go to my polygon tool here to make my triangle. And keeping my mouse button held down as I hit my down arrow keys, every time I hit one, it takes a side away. So till I get to the minimum, which is three. That looks good. So maybe make that uh, more like green, possibly. Oh, no, that's too dark. Nice light green. I think I made my square a little bit too small here, so 
I'm going down my shift key. I'm going to pull that up. And let's go back and look at our regular. So I had a green and a blue and the yellow shapes here. So let's go back and uh, make one of my squares a light green. And let's try making that uh, yellow. Maybe, oops, holding down option here. Hovering outside till I get that little double-headed arrow, I can uh, create a uh, rotated square. Let's rotate this a little randomly here and create yet another triangle and rotate that. And you just have to kind of picture how you want these to look. Maybe pink would look good there. And you can make as many little shapes as you want. Everybody's pattern is going to be different here. Option key for that. And what color? Maybe a uh, blue would look good there. So let's try a light blue. So when I have something that I think looks pretty close to what I want, we can kind of look at that and see, yeah, yeah, that's close enough. Because we can always edit it once we start creating our pattern. So my selection tool, select all of those little objects and make, make sure nothing else is selected. Object, pattern, make. And then I'll get this little dialog box that says, a new pattern has been added to this watches panel. OK. So I'm going to call this, oops, sprinkles. And Illustrator has now taken us into the pattern making mode. And you can see right up here it says new pattern. And when I'm done, I'm going to click this. And I now have my patterns options box open. And this is a really, really powerful, powerful feature. This is my pattern here. And you can see that Illustrator is creating all these copies here to let me know what my pattern is going to look like. I can control the way that it tiles, like this, or this, or this. So there's all kinds of possibilities here. Grid. I think I'm going to go with brick by row. Um, I can control the brick offset here, and it'll live update this for you. And you can really just work with this intuitively, visually. Uh, and I can even control how many copies it makes. So this is, this is very, very cool. Uh, so as I look at this, the beautiful thing about this pattern making tool is that it allows me to make changes and it'll live update my pattern. So for example, if I hold down my option key and drag this little green square over here, note that that updates all the way through my pattern. Or if I were to rotate it a little differently or fill it with a new color, Again, that updates in my pattern, which I think is pretty amazing. Um, this is such an improved feature over what we had in the past uh, that I just can't tell you. So in any event, when I am happy with the way that my pattern looks, then um, I just come right up here and click Done. And here is my pattern in the swatches panel. So let's go ahead and apply it. Now I already have a fill in my cupcake here. And I don't want that pink fill to go away. I want to lay the pattern on top of that pink gradient. And here's how we do it with the very, very powerful appearance panel.
With this panel, I can add new strokes and new fills to the same path. We just go for a minute and look at what we have in outline view. We have these three closed paths here. That's cool. I make sure this is selected. I go to my appearance panel and go to the panel menu and choose add new fill. Now I have two different fills. It just duplicates the fill I had and adds another one on top. Can't really see that anything's happened because they're both that pink gradient, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on this little fill box and choose my sprinkles pad. And there it is. Now, that's not really the size I want. That's too big. But I can scale the pattern without scaling the shape. And here's how I do it. Make sure the shape is selected. Choose the scale tool. Hold down my option uh, or my control key, depending on if Mac or a PC. I make sure that I've unchecked transform objects and checked transform patterns. So let's uh, preview this and see how it's going to look and try scaling 50%. Yeah, it's not going to preview for me. That's okay. We'll just go ahead. Oh, there it went. There it went. And now we can see I have a little sprinkles pattern there. You can also rotate patterns uh, without rotating the object, and it's good to know that you can do this. I'll show you uh, an example of it here. If I add yet another new fill, now it's duplicated my pattern fill. If I choose this fill in the appearance panel, select my rotation tool, hold down option or control and click, once again, I make sure transform, op transform Objects is unchecked and Transform Patterns is checked. Preview. What if I rotated this by, say, 30 degrees? Click OK. Note that that rotated and duplicated the pattern. If I wanted to, I could scale this one down. Transform patterns checked. Scale at by 50%. Oh, wait. And notice now I have two patterns resting on top of each other. So I'm going to show you one last thing you can do to a fill using the appearance panel. If I select my top fill, which is this one, the uh, small rotated pattern, I select that and twirl this down a little fill triangle. I can now have access to opacity and click this and I can reduce that to say 70% opacity or maybe even 60% and make it um, semi-transparent which starts to add some very interesting complexity to this. In any case, I hope you enjoy playing with the pattern tool and playing with the appearance palette because this will allow you to do many great things in Adobe Illustrator.